Tomar, go ahead with your audiobook question. <laughs> well, well it's sort of a big question or amorphous question because I'm, I started to research. Uh, I have a project to do an audiobook for someone or to research what's involved to see if I can do it myself. And I saw, you know, there's a lot of options, obviously. I mean, you can hire a professional, blah, blah, blah. You can do it yourself, but rent time in a, in a sound studio expensive. You can do it yourself in your own home office, but hire someone to produce and edit and enhance and so forth. Or you can do it yourself in your own little closet, like they talk about a little tiny padded cell that you go yeah. into. Yeah. And then use, you know, using enough the right equipment and the right editing, you could possibly create it just yourself. Now, I think you've done it, haven't you, George? I've done, I've done I've done my own audiobook. I've done my own audiobook once for myself, and I've done two audiobooks, audiobooks for two other authors, Have me you? recording the voice because I really? loved their I loved their books so much that I said, why isn't there an audiobook version of this? Can I record it? Because I, I enjoy the book and I would enjoy uh, kind of reading it again as I'm speaking through the whole thing. So I they said yes. And so I did everything. I recorded it. I sent it off to an audio editor to master it. Uh, I put the files together. I gave it to the author to they they uh, they uploaded it themselves to you know um, acx.com, which is the, I know about that. Uh, yes, a Amazon's um, audible audible, Amazon audible, audible platform, yeah. which is the biggest platform for audiobooks. Anyway, yes. So I can tell you absolutely. So so let me just um, I'm going to talk about two things. One is the overall kind of framework about it and secondly is the technology that so that one is that um the framework is is that i think about it in the three stages of content okay i brought i bring it here for this purpose too in that stage one is you don't really know if it's going to do well uh so you just put as little effort into stage one content as possible Stage two is, oh, the thing did well. Let's go ahead and improve upon it, make it even better quality. Um, stage three, well, in this case, it doesn't, stage three is putting it out into a product, but audiobook is already a product. So we could just call it two stages. One is experimentation and one is, you know, actual improvement. And, and okay, so stage one is what I recommend everybody who is watching this, listening to this, to consider for their audiobook, like don't put too much effort and cost into doing it because you don't know if it's going to be worthwhile. Like most audiobooks sell like a few dozen dollars in profit. That's it in the lifetime of the audiobook. They sold a few. It's not easy to sell audiobooks. It's even harder than selling <laughs> Kindle books. Okay, so so let's not have this fantasy that oh my god, this is going to make an audiobook is going to go wild. It may, but even my audiobooks now I. The, 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 the two audiobooks I created for the authors, those books were already popular, so they did really well. Now, my own audiobook, eh, I have two audiobooks. One I recorded myself, and another one I basically uh, had an audio, audience member record it because I really liked her voice. So I have two audiobooks myself, and uh, they sell so-so. I mean, it's like it's, I sell a few a month, and I have a pretty big audience compared to most people listening to this, right? So uh, long story short, okay, so that, that's my recommendation is small effort for the first audiobook, you know, you, yeah. So number one, and then let's talk about the technology for a small effort, okay? Mm -hmm. Record it yourself. Um, if, you, if, you, if you don't mind doing it and uh, basically use any audio recording program, as long as it is, there's a, here's the key, two, two as long as, okay? One, there is enough, uh, there's not so much reverb in the room. So if you're in a room with blank walls, hard walls and hardwood floor or whatever, there's gonna be a lot of reverb. It's gonna sound like echoey, basically. It sounds tingy. It sounds like you're talking in a tunnel, right? And that's not good for audiobook quality. So the simplest way is I record it either, I put my laptop, I, I sit at the foot of my bed. My bedroom is nicely, you know, there's carpet and there's, Obviously, the bed has a lot of cloth to absorb sound, right? So I put the laptop in the, at the foot of my bed. I sit at the foot of my bed with a chair that works, and I record it using this exact thing I'm doing right now. I, this is an iPhone slash iPad, Apple, official Apple 
your piece, buy the buy it directly from Apple.com. Do not buy it from Amazon because most of the Amazon uh, or online earpieces that that say they're Apple created are not from Apple. They're they're from a third party that pretends to be Apple. Buy it directly from Apple.com, and you'll have the highest quality Apple iPhone slash iPad uh, earphones microphone. I haven't found I have not found a better microphone than this. Even the Blue Yeti, the which I paid hundred dollars for, yeah, you have it, wasn't as good as this. I, maybe I don't know how to use. I tried the Blue Yeti. I tried. I mean, I'm not. I'm fairly tech savvy. So I tried it out, and I tried out various ear. I've I've bought half a dozen different lapel mics and and mm. and and headsets. The best selling headset on Amazon that was like 30, 40 bucks. I don't remember. It wasn't super expensive. This to this day is still the best. So I have no idea why, but. So here's number one, everything has to be padded. So you either do it at the foot of your bed or if your bedroom has a lot of, if you still hear the reverb, if you listen back and go, wow, is there, can I do better? Yes, you can. You go into your, the closet. The closet has lots of clothes and you got to situate yourself in a comfortable way where you can record. So number one. Number two is the distance between your mouth and the microphone should be pretty much the same. Um, throughout your recordings. It doesn't have to be exact, like, oh my God, it moved half an inch. No, no. It, but if it's like, sometimes it's here, uh, you're recording it like this, and then sometimes it's here, that, that's not going to be the right quality. It's not going to be consistent. So as long as you're comfortable and you're not, if you have, to, if you feel like you have to hold it, I, when I record audiobooks, I kind of hold it like this, you know, just a little bit closer to my mouth, um, mm -hmm. but I'm comfortable. I don't feel like I'm straining and I can do this for an hour or, or half an hour, just like this, just fine. But as long as I remember what my position is from my mouth to the mic, that's mm -hmm. consistent throughout the audiobook, more or less, that's good. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then thirdly is to be aware of pops and, you know, just be aware of when you're, t you know, so the Do you buy one of those road protectors? Well, things? actually, uh, let me, let me, let me go back. Uh, mm -hmm. Even with the stage one stuff, I don't, I don't worry so much about it because I'll tell you why the mastering, the guy who does it, uh, we'll, we'll typically take those out. So let me, let me actually mm. remove that, remove that. I don't actually, I didn't worry about most of that. I naturally don't even have a lot of big pops in my speaking. So that was, that was not as big of a deal, but, um, uh, when you are recording, you're naturally going to make mistakes. Yeah. And this is the, 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 the final tip for you is make it easy for yourself. Again, stage one, don't make it so frustrating. Like, oh, I just said, you know, uh, I got to record the entire chapter. Again. No, no, no. What you do is whenever you make a mistake, okay, you can simply pause for five seconds. That's all. Mm -hmm. Silence for five seconds mm -hmm. and then speak the same sentence mm -hmm. or the same, yeah, se sentence over again is probably a better like, because basically the audio engineer will notice, we'll notice the pauses because it, the, the sound waves go silent for a while. And they'll, they'll, they'll particularly go back there and go, okay, so the, it sounds like she started the sentence over. So he, you know, he'll, he'll chop it up so that it sounds smooth, basically. So just any mistakes, five seconds, speak the sentence over. And the other thing is, uh, I don't know about you, but I, I do list, I have listened to a variety of audiobooks. And you should also just listen to a variety of audiobooks. And I've noticed, a dramatic difference in quality from, from audiobook to audiobook. Mm -hmm. I was so shocked that even someone like Seth Godin, who is mm -hmm. one of the most famous marketing uh, experts in the world, who has millions of followers, his audiobooks probably sell in the tens of thousands easily, easily, tens of thousands. When I, I listened, the last audiobook I listened to from him, it sounded like he recorded it in just random living room, his living room, and it was poorly mastered, not as good as mastered as mine. When I say mastered, I mean the audio engineer has, I spent, I spent about $250 to master each audiobook. So it costs about two, 250 to, depending, if it's a really long audiobook, maybe it costs 400. But now I'll say two to $400, you pay the audio engineer and they make it sound brilliant for you. Uh, they, they remove all the mistakes and all that stuff. So that, it only cost me time plus two to $400 for the audio engineer. Now, when I listened to the Seth Godin audiobook, I'm like, this was not engineered. And I could tell he made some mistakes. And chapter one was louder. Chapter two was softer. I'm like, are you got to be kidding me? And guess what? It still did well, ratings wise. It did. So it's like people are surprisingly forgiving. Mm. If, the qual if the content is good, you know, and if they really like the author, 
it's like you can almost record it in the, in the bathroom and, and, and upload it and people will be fine. And then I've also heard another audiobook um, by James Altucher, very famous influencer. He has millions of fans. I've been following him for a decade. And he has way, his audience is a thousand times bigger than mine. And I listened to his audiobook and it's like he's recording a podcast. It's exactly it. He's like, all right, so I, I'm going to talk about something that wasn't in my book, but I, I just wanted to say that, you know, it just goes off the cuff in an audiobook. I'm like, what am I doing being so perfectionistic? Oh, I didn't say the exact same sentence structure as my book. It doesn't effing matter. People, people basically listen to audiobooks like listen, listen to podcasts. So, as lo- so, so we can simply do, do a better job simply of sending it to an audio engineer, okay. which I will give you a link of, because that's the guy I use and he probably needs more business. Um, I'll give you a link right, right in the in comments below. I, I, I'll try to remember to put it below, but if you're watching this later and it's not below, just let me know. Um, there, there it is. It's, uh, yeah. So anyway, Tomar, I'll let you ask any other questions. Yeah. Wow. So oh, the other, was- I'm sorry. One more, one more thing. One more thing I forgot to say. Yeah. Record, uh, if you're going to record, record it in, um, you know, you can record a few chapters at a time. Like basically, if you're going to sit down, record for half an hour to an hour. Don't exhaust yourself. Try to make the process fun for yourself. I can only bear to record 30 to 45 minutes and, I'm, and I get bored or I get tired. So just tired. make it fun for yourself. And, yeah. and every time you record, it becomes a separate audio file and you will deliver to the audio engineer just a yeah. series of files. And it doesn't have to be each file is one chapter. It doesn't matter. Huh. You just simply, be, before another chapter, you just pause for 15 seconds and you say chapter four, blah, 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 okay. title. And okay. then you just you go. So, so the files don't have to be, chapterized is what okay. I'm saying. Okay, so that's very interesting because I've been reading some articles about it and I was told uh, every chapter should be a separate file. No, uh, no. Also, oh, I was no, 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 hold on. Uh, when you upload it, when you finally upload it, uh, they have to be separate files, of course. But the audio engineer files. will do The audio engineer will take care of it. The, the raw I data see. that goes over to the engineer I can see. just be okay. however many files you want. Okay. I, I was also, I read a tip about making But, but you should, I'm sorry, you should rename the, 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 the files you give them. You should rename it, you know, chapter one to four, next one, chapter five to six. So just mm-hmm. make sure you're naming it properly in the file uh, mm-hmm. that you deliver. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, I was, I also, oh, so I was given a tip about mistakes that you should clap your hands because that makes a big spike oh, in the oh, audio cool. and that that's catches your eye when or the, the editor's eye. Yeah. Um, I, but silence for five seconds is just fine. There's uh, something ten, similar. 10 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Well, either you could do them both, whatever. Um, uh, I, I would say clapping. Mm, it's funny. I, I don't, I'm not sure I would recommend that because it might reverberate. It, 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 it might actually mess up the audio editing because it does a big spike and the if the audio engineer doesn't catch it that'd be terrible number one well, they'd have to catch it well okay anyway I, i'll do what you said and yeah I, I think speak. silence is better that's what my audio engineer told me i okay, they, well, they, then... he, he didn't recommend this clap i don't i wouldn't recommend okay. it either because it might mess up the uh, the uh, overall levels of the whole it thing might, yes but when you're okay. recording too because the recording software automatically does some leveling of itself so yeah okay. i wouldn't recommend a spike okay okay I also thought I read that it was important that your spoken words match the written words. That's precisely. what I'm saying. No, not the ones I'm listening to. The the famous audiobooks I'm listening to, sometimes That's they go off the cuff. Okay. Like a podcast. Okay. Um, the audio engineer. Okay, so this is a crucial thing because I was and wondering. Actually, I'm sorry. If, well, I'm sorry, sorry, Tomar, yeah. I keep interrupting you. I actually felt honored and I was like delighted that that James Altucher went gave me a bonus material. That wasn't in the written book. You see uh, what I mean? Uh, yeah, yeah, you enjoy. It. Yes, of course. It's a. I get that. I get that. But but the fact that it doesn't, you don't get penalized, or there isn't no, some glitch no, it, it, that it feels audible. Intimate. It feels yeah, intimate. No, no, there's yeah, no, yeah. There's no, there's no. No, I thought no I thought there was some kind of equivalent. No, there's no. Oh, okay. there is. Um, there is. No, you're right. There is uh, some program in, in Amazon to match. Um, I think they do try to match the. The, the, the people reading the Kindle who want to listen to the audiobook at the same time, I think they do try to match something. So I don't know how, if someone goes off the cuff, how that matches, they might, I'm sure the matching software is smart enough to know that, okay, there's no match right now. So we'll wait until there's another match. But, but if, you're, if you are going to go off the cuff, it probably is wiser to record a, a, a bonus chapter or something like that. Yeah. Well, it's not about going off the cuff, but sometimes, uh, you know, there are things in the text, like there could be a link and you can't 
verbalize the link. Oh, no, they... no, that happens all the time. No, don't, don't worry about that. Um, audiobook uh, readers often say, and here there is a link you need to go to. No, no, there, that's, that's normal. So Would you yeah. say that here there's a link to? As long as you're consistent with, with it, just for the read, for, for the listeners, mm -hmm. you know. Or, or for instance, you might have a format where there's questions and answers, and in yeah. the written text, it's the questions are bolded. Right, exactly. Verbalizing, no. you might so say you question. Should listen. You should listen yeah. to the audiobooks. And by the way, I should mm -hmm. let everyone know, if you have a, well, everyone has a library, local li lo library. The library system, and probably mm -hmm. in most countries, have an app where you can listen to audiobooks for free. There's millions of, I don't know about millions, tens of thousands of audiobooks that you can download or Great. borrow for free. And you can borrow uh, audiobooks that have the dialogue question and answer. A lot of the channeling stuff, you know, some of them can be borrowed from, from the library and you can listen okay, to how Okay, fabulous. They do it. Okay, fabulous. I, I also heard that, you know, like one of the things, yeah, 40 minutes is about the most you can do without exhausting yourself. Well, everyone has a different stamina, sure. Right, but that you need to be fresh, you know, you don't, you need to be aware that yeah, your body, yeah. you have to have energy try in to, your body. Try to record at the same time of day same level um, of energy for, for, for many reasons T time of day because there's outside noises there's your own <laughs> your own your own energy level at the time of day mm -hmm. your voice sounds different yeah so mm -hmm. same time of day so i have in my apartment a little um you know what they call in the old days a maid's room like it's it's almost like a it's almost like a big walk-in closet it's that smaller room it has carpeting it has stuff yes. all over the place yes, yes. The only thing about it is it has a window that looks out onto a courtyard and oh, okay. sometimes so there, there might could be noise. No, there could be noise yeah. or it's right on the hall. There could be someone coming out of the elevator. So if I hear noise, should I stop and then re-record? Just pretend it's a mistake. Okay. Now, to be honest, like uh, some noises, uh, most noises, it, it probably won't be recorded uh, or it will be small enough where people don't even care. Um, but if it is like a loud bang <laughs> or something, you should certainly, or, or someone like shouting, you know, shouting or yeah, they're talking or something like, yeah, you should definitely pause until that's over. The other thing you could do is you can, you can buy online, uh, sound, um, uh, cubes. What is it called? Uh, does, does somebody know who's here? Uh, sound, um, muffling cubes or not cubes, um, pads, uh, sorry, they're called soundproof foam panels, hmm. uh, acoustic panels. I'm gonna share my, share my <laughs> screen here. Um, let's see, I'm gonna share my screen so that you can see. Oh, do you see my Amazon here yep. screen? Yeah, yep. so it yep. looks like that. They, they come in like, yeah, so oh. you can buy them. They're you know, $37 hmm. uh, for 48 of them. <laughs> Okay. 48 so you, of them. 48 yeah. of those, it's, it's relatively cheap. Uh, sound, uh, acoustic soundproofing foam is sometimes what they're called. Um, yeah, so basically you buy those uh, acoustic foam panels and then you could, when you're ready to record, stick them up. I don't know if they have an adhesive on one side or- But you you'd have, have to, to stick them up on something. And what do you stick them up on? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I think so, like this one, self-adhesive. So some of them have- Yeah, because what, what people also recommend is like I was thinking of creating a little box to put the yeah. computer oh, and the, okay. and you know, the microphone. And then soundproofing yeah. that. Yeah, I haven't tried that again. I, again, I think about making it as easy for myself as possible. So closet really works for most of us. It should work. And then, yeah. so the, the crucial thing though that you've told me is that it is important to hire an audio engineer. You can't really do it yeah. without that. Well, you can, like I said, even Seth Godin, <laughs> let's just, audiobook having someone I mean, because i am aware of these things i'm sure most of his audience didn't even mind or care most of them are business people and they're busy and they're just listening to it on the plane or whatever or on the car they don't care and so you have to think about it most people most of the audiobook listeners they aren't like focused sitting in a quiet room listening to your audiobook no, they're that's washing the, the point. dishes. They're doing they're walking, stuff. They're, they're listening walking in the, the car. Walking the dog. They're walking they're the walking dog. The, they're, they're like, there's other noises happening around. That's Most right. of them that's aren't right. listening super carefully for every sound and everything else. So let's not worry so much about it. I think, I think whatever you use to record podcasts is enough, more than enough, probably. A lot of people like go through extra lengths to record their podcast. I'm like, my God, that's, a, that's more than I do from audiobooks. Well, should I use, I was going to just record on Audacity. Is that okay? Yeah, they're right. So you can record on Audacity or on GarageBand. If you're on a Mac, you do GarageBand. Um, or gosh, you know what? 
most of our phones have excellent voice recording software just that comes on its own it's very sensitive mm. in fact and so if you are willing to just hold the phone like this in a consistent position always you could do that or maybe have a put it on a tripod at the right yeah yeah position. sure sure right a tripod there we go so you don't have to hold it right oh that would be worth experimenting with totally. okay totally. but basically the i mean if you don't get an audio engineer then you have to do the editing yourself yeah, that's that's a pain. And, that's a pain in the butt. Unless you like doing that stuff, I would say but gosh, that it's, would it's be, worth the three hundred dollars or whatever. Okay, but yeah. this is really important. Like, if you're going to yeah. spend your money, spend it on an audio engineer. Yeah, and, and, and last thing I want to say is this: like, mm -hmm. now that I've had somebody record one of my audiobooks, you know, a woman record my writing, and yes. I've recorded two so, other audiobooks, but those two books I recorded were were men who wrote the book. So, you know, I, it turns out that most people prefer the author. To record the audiobook, mm -hmm. they they like the author's voice if at all possible, mm -hmm. um, and if it's not possible to get the author's voice, get the same gender <laughs> because it just otherwise it's kind of weird that why does this person sound you know this person's a male writer now it's a woman's voice it's, anyway yeah okay that's worth consideration well yeah. this was really very helpful good good very very right. helpful yes. thank you you're welcome I will send you the bill later. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, thanks so I thought I already asking. paid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Sure. Yeah, and Gregory, uh, you were yeah, a couple other things. Yeah, just one a sm a small addition to to the conversation. I'm aware, and it's inspired in part by all this conversation about background noises and and the di the different things that impact the quality of the listener experience. I'm very sensitive as a listener to the quality of, of yeah. the reading right, right. and how present someone is either in their heart or in their head. Uh, uh, I'm so glad you how, brought this up. Yes. How, how, yes. how much it feels like they're literally reading versus oh, reference so before yes. about, you know, does it feel spontaneous? Um, right. And, and so, so one of the things I, I'm having a really delightful experience currently listening to Daniel Siegel's reading of his own book on the neurology of we, which is about attachment theory. Mm. And I, I feel like, even though I know he's reading his book, I feel like I'm sitting in the living room, there's a fire going, and he's just telling me his insights yes. as they're coming. It has, yes. it has that real Spontaneous life. feel. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and so to, to, to use, to use an acting, uh, ref reference point, right. there's an, there's an old, uh, saying, I don't remember if it was Lee Strasberg or someone else, someone at some point made the observation that acting is the art of creating the, the illusion of the first time, you know, <laughs> eight shows a week for, for <laughs> hopefully for a year or two you know but it um but but it, it is that creating the illusion of the first time and w one very like simple tool that that can be can be helpful it seems to me as a listener and so this is for selfish reasons um is really taking the time in the same way i've heard you suggest before doing a video we might do really taking yes. the time as a reader to sit down and imagine again as a narrator back, as yeah. a yeah as a narrator go going back to what you said earlier about you know when we were talking about meeting our audience where they are That's what right. they want and yes and also what they need well imagining who am i speaking to and really actually imagine who am i reading to as yes. if they were sitting right in front of us beautiful and may maybe two three or four people who are different right. Yes. So that yes. because that's going to affect us differently. That's going to draw out of us. Yes. Slight, slightly different nuance in our. <laughs> I, I love and it. And it also makes the the actual process of reading that much more uh, to use Julie's reference, that much more of a delightful experience. That's for us. it. And if we're delighted while we're while we're reading and being inspired by, oh, now I'm talking to John. Now I'm talking to Sheila. Now I'm talking. If we're delighted by just having a sense of who we're talking to, it's going to create the illusion for the listener that we're talking just to them. It's going to contribute to our being present. And by our being present, it's going to contribute to their being that much more present. 
I love it. Oh, beautiful. Beautifully said. It is a performance. It is a conversation, an authentic, connected uh, experience, not just the mechanical act of making sure the words are read. So thank you so much.